Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Brian Kirkham in Michigan. He is holding a PPO violation hearing. Actually, one party is alleging violations, and the other party wants the PPO removed. And there are some wild allegations going back and forth on this. Some of them sound very far-fetched. Some don't sound far-fetched. So the judge has to figure out who's telling the truth and who's not. I'll let you guys watch and I'll give my comments at the end. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Monday, April 8, 2024 at 10.59 a.m. And this is for case 2024-462-PP, Tiffany Osborne versus Shane Osborne, Attorney Wickham for plaintiff and Attorney Bailey Hobbs for defendant. Good morning to everyone. Morning. The court will note that this matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to terminate the uh, personal protective order in this matter and plaintiff's motion to show cause for violation in this uh, particular case. So why don't we address the uh, defendant's motion first as that was filed first. Uh, Ms. Bailey Hobbs, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. Ms. Wickham? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Ho Bailey Hobbs, do you wish to make an opening statement or proceed to uh, proofs? Um, Your Honor, I believe we have limited time today, so we can just proceed to proofs. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wickham, do you wish to reserve or waive your opening statement? I'll waive my opening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Bailey Hobbs, you can proceed and call your first witness. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to call my client, Mr. Osborne. Okay, Mr. Osborne, if you would raise your right hand, we'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Sir, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Osborne, how old are you? I am 55. And how do you know the petitioner, Tiffany Osborne? I am married to Tiffany Osborne. How long have you guys been married? 22 years, roughly. Have you read the petition for personal protection order that Ms. Osborne submitted to the court? I have. Okay, and she's made allegations against you in that personal protection order. Um, are those allegations true? No, they are not true. They are, to my knowledge, completely falsified to fit the narrative that she's trying to achieve. Mr. Osborne, the first allegation that Ms. Osborne made was uh, mm -hmm. regarding January 30th, 2024. Do you recall that date? Very vividly. Can you uh, briefly state what happened? Well, <clears throat> Mrs. Osborne was sleeping all day from 3.30 until 10 o'clock at night. I was in band practice. I took my kids to the grocery store, got some food, came back. Miss Tiffany Osborne woke up at 10 o'clock at night, and she decided that she was going to go off on both of our kids and started with my youngest daughter and told her that she was a spoiled little bitch, and she's going to ride the bus now, and she's privileged and doesn't do this. And then she moved on to my other daughter because she came home because to let her know that she was going to use her phone and she didn't get her out of bed on time. So she lost her job and it was his, her fault. And then my phone rang while I was out working in my barn and my youngest daughter, Peyton Paisley said, you better lock the door. Mommy's being okay. crazy again. Okay. Carl will sustain the objections. Mr. Osborne, you can't testify to what somebody else said. Okay. I apologize for that. It's fine. So um, she comes, somebody said, uh, <clears throat> my phone rang and somebody said, better lock the door. So I go to lock my door honor, you're saying. before I got it's into the door. Sustained. The court will strike the answer. Mr. Osborne, you can't say what somebody else said. I just said that. So either you're not listening or you're disregarding my admonition. So don't say what somebody else said. 
other than the petitioner. Your Honor, may I um, redirect my client? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Osborne, so in the evening, you, you mentioned around 10 p.m., um, did you and Miss Osborne have an interaction? Yes, we did. Okay, and was that right around 10 p.m.? I'm not sure the exact time. Um, like I said, I was in my barn. I know that she came busting into the door and was telling me all that was going on in the household with the, my two daughters. And I said, I've already been called and told what was happening. And she just started crazy going off and carrying on basically everything that's gone, that's stated into this uh, petition. It's kind of like a, a, a confession of what she actually did to me. Everything that she said that I did was actually what she did to me. And so your interaction with Miss Osborne, was that in the house, outside, or in your pole barn? It was in the pole barn. Okay. And is it, am I correct in understanding that you said you were in the pole barn first? Yeah, I was there by myself, minding my own business. And Mrs. Osborne never comes down to the pole barn unless she wants money or something that she needs. So she never comes down there for any reason. Okay. And on this night, Miss. Osborne came to the pole barn, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so when she arrived at the pole barn, what happened? She came through the door and started carrying on about how her two daughters are doing this and that and this. And then I said, I've already been abreast of that. I said, you know what? I'm not here to fight. <clears throat> Would you please just leave? I don't want to fight with you. Would you please leave? And I asked her to leave at least 10 times when all this happened. So she became frustrated and picked up one of my microphone stands and threw it on my drum set. Very expensive equipment. I said, "You can you leave, please? I asked her again, would you please leave? Leave, I don't want to fight. I went to pick up my mic stand. She grabbed another mic stand. I grabbed the mic stand. So you're not going to throw this. And then I pulled it out of her hands and she fell to the ground, just like a cartoon. So I went and picked up my other mic stands and set them back up. And she continued to go on and yell and belittle me and tell me all these names that she always calls me. I asked her to leave again, again and again. She started walking towards the door and she got towards the door right outside of it. I went to the door. I went to pull the door behind me and she turned around and grabbed two handfuls of my hair and said, no, at the top of her lungs and fell to the ground just like she did the first time. Where was I going? right to the ground because she had two handfuls of my hair. She would not let go of my hair. So I put my knee, I don't know where it was at because it was dark out, to pull my hair out of it. I went back in to lock my barn because I knew that what she came out here for was to do exactly what she's done today, to set up some kind of PPO or whatever she's doing to get me out of the house. It was very obvious because she came down there with no witnesses. So from that point, she laid on the ground and said her back was broken and threw rocks and stones at my barn and hit the door handle and everything else she could and yelled at the top of her lungs to get the attention of whoever to call the police and call the ambulance. Okay. What did you do while she was on the ground? I walked, I locked my barn. I could not find the keys. So I walked back into my barn. As I walked out, I it was dark out. I accidentally stepped on her foot. And then she proceeded to kick me like five times while calling me all kinds of profanities. I walked back in. I walked out to my truck, grabbed my keys, came back to the barn, saw the phone on the floor, picked the phone up, stick up my pocket, locked the door, and I walked out. And I walked up to the house because I knew that this was not, this is all just an act, an act to achieve whatever she was trying to achieve. Miss Osborne indicates that you screamed and spit in her face. Did that happen? No, as I said earlier, most of the statement is just a, um, is everything that she said that I did to her is exactly what she did to me, verbatim. Did you chest bump Miss Osborne? Did not. 
nope, I did not do that. I was trying to get her out of my barn because she, I have a lot of expensive things in there. And she was trying to destroy them with because she was in a rage for whatever reason it was. She had just came from the house yelling at both my daughters and told my daughters, I'm going down to this pole barn. Get to go out with your dad or whatever she said. I wasn't there. So I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't mean to quote somebody else, but that's what was told to me. So she came down there in the rage and that's what happened. Did you scream at her and say, now nobody will want you, you fat fucking cunt stupid bitch? No, these are um these are words that Mrs. Tiffany Osborne comes up with on her own. She seems to have a vocabulary and ways of putting things so they sound vulgar and disgusting, and then seems to want to put them in my mouth as though I said them, which is totally not true. Did the um, police arrive after that happened? They did. When the police arrived, I uh, when EMT arrived, I had gone to the house because I knew that this was all an act. I watched her fall on the ground. I watched her grab my hair and fall to the ground, literally on these rocks. And I heard all of what she was saying. So when EMT arrived, I went to the house because I was no longer, I wouldn't be any use out there. And I didn't want to hear any more of the nasty language that I was being called and the way I was being treated. Did you speak with the police officer at that time? I, I spoke with the two officers that night. I was in the house with my two daughters. And they came to the door and asked me what was happening. I said, well, let's start at the beginning. And I had them take talk to Paisley and had Paisley tell them what had happened. I had them talk to Peyton and had Peyton tell them what had happened. And then I gave them my story as to what had happened. And the officers told me that the EMT had... Sorry about, sorry about that. I'm sorry. I apologize. Mr. Osborne, um, were you arrested that night? No, ma'am, I was not. Um, do you know if Miss Osborne was uh, taken to the hospital by the EMTs? Uh, I believe that she was taken to the uh, hospital on her request. Um, because she sustained any injuries. How long, Mr. Osborne, how long was uh, Miss Osborne gone from the house? Oddly enough, she was only gone for two hours. So with the broken back and all that she had, I was surprised that myself that she was only gone for two hours and released because uh, we received a phone call and my oldest daughter had to go pick her up at two o'clock in the morning. And all, all of this um, allegedly occurred, or at least this incident occurred on January 30th. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. When were you served with the personal protection order? Uh, February 19th at around 11 o'clock. And how were you served? I was served by a state police officer. I was um, I, I was going out to my barn to get a charger for my phone, and I was in some long johns and Crocs, and I had on just a shirt. And when I walked out there, I was locked out of my house, and I had to figure out what was going on. And then the state police pulled in and served me the PPO. So between January 30th and February 19th, um, how did Miss Osborne appear at home? Absolutely fine. Matter of fact, the night that she got the PPO on the 16th, we actually spent the night watching movies together on, on our couch in our house. And we did the same thing again on Saturday night. So I was totally oblivious to, that she had even pulled this per, personal protection order. So this is the second time that she's pulled one. The first time I had it on me for six months and never even knew it, had to leave my house until... She dropped the PPO for the first time. When the police officers came, did you um, did you willingly leave or did they have to force you? 
No, I willingly left. Uh, and I went in there and asked if I could. Just to clarify, I'm I'm talking about on the 19th when you were served. Yes, ma'am. Nope. I willingly left. I went in and put on a pair of pants um, and a shirt. And I asked um, for my business computer because I was sitting there getting ready for my day's worth of work and trying to get going on it. And the only thing that I could leave with was what I had. I asked uh, Tiffany if I could have my computer. And she looked at me and said, no, that's my family computer. Knowing very well that this was my business computer. So she's done nothing to try to help anything with this situation as far as my business. But yet she wants all of our bills to be paid. I'm still out. 90 day, 60 days now and I can't I have nowhere to leave I'm displaced I have nowhere to go I can't run a company I have all these bills that are forced upon me to pay and I have no way to pay them because I got a trailer full of tools and I'm a general contractor I can't go to a job and pull out all my tools and put them all back in there's just no way for me Your to Honor, sustain objection as to relevance uh, at this point Yeah we can move on Ms. Bailey Hobbs Thank you Your Honor um, Mr. Osborne, let's talk about the second allegation that was in Ms. Osborne's petition. Um, that allegation indicates that on January 26th of 2024, at your house, um, that you threw a glass of pop in her face that got all over the walls, the blinds, windows, um, and you were very drunk and said, oh, great, while you're off in your corner career, I'll just be a broke down old man. And that she wiped herself off and stayed with her daughters in Grand Rapids so you could cool off. Do you recall the date of January 26th? I, um, I don't recall. It seems to me as though we have many different situations that's all being blended into one. And it just seems like an, a delusion, but I do not remember doing anything. I remember the night that she told me that she got accepted into the nursing program. I remember that very vividly going into the living room. And I re remember speaking with Peyton and I remember speaking with her and how excited she was. And I was excited for her because one of our problems has been that she refuses to work. And I was excited that she was going to finally found something that maybe she could get a job and be a productive member of society. But I don't remember any, any other thing. I remember talking with Peyton and I remember talking with Tiffany about all the unlimited opportunities that she had available because my daughter Peyton is involved in the nursing program. And I remember just having joy. I don't remember any of the negativity that, that she has, um, Put down. Do you recall throwing pop in her face? No, nope. I do not recall throwing pop in her face. Okay, let's move to the third incident that was written out by Miss Osborne. Um, Mr. Osborne, this this is a, a seemingly a narrative from. Miss Osborne, so I'm just going to point out a few of these things and have you testify about them. Miss um, Osborne indicates that since 2017 that um, you began using meth. Have you been using meth? No, no, ma'am, I have not been using meth. I use um, Adderall that I've been prescribed. So uh, this whole meth thing has... Um, it all came from her brother that was addicted to it. And I was trying to be uh, a brother-in-law and help him through this time. So I found that, you know, when people in your family need help, you don't just shut the door on them and kick them out of your house. I, I wanted to help him out and I, and I did help him out. And now he's clean and he's doing well for himself. Do you use any drugs? Other than your prescribed Adderall? Mr. Osborne, did you hear my question? I your use, Honor, um, I, okay. I have uh, marijuana that I use. Yes, I have, I use uh, marijuana. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Um, how about any illegal okay. drugs? 
No, I use no illegal drugs other than what I've just told you with a prescribed Adderall. And I used marijuana, and that is all that I use. Do you know if Miss Osborne has used drugs? I'm sure she has. She is so secretive about her life and what she does that I really don't know who she is. So I would have to say yes on that. Speculation. Sustained. Mr. Osborne, have have you seen Miss Osborne use any drugs? Yes, I have. And what's that? Um, I've been with this woman for 38 years of my life. So throughout this time, I've seen her use many different kinds. Um, Miss Osborne indicates that she can remember one time when Shane became angry and he threw a threw glass drinkware at me. That mason jar hit the floor and exploded. I end up cutting the bottom of my foot. Um, did that happen to your recollection? Once again, are you there? We can hear we you. We can hear you, sir. Wow. Just talk. Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Mr. Osborne, are you talking or what? Mr. Osborne, can you hear us? Wait, he's reconnecting. He, we lost him for a moment there. I'm sorry. I don't, I got a bad connection. I don't have anywhere to, um, this is the only thing that I have available. I apologize to the court. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Osborne, did you hear my um, question regarding the glass drinkware um, and Miss Osborne's allegation that you threw it at her and she cut her foot? I, I did hear that. And th here we go again. This is just a, a delusional state of mind where it seems as though she can make up anything in her head and whatever she says, it's real. That's her reality. No, I do remember dropping a mason jar on the floor and her helping me clean it up. And I told her, thank you. As far as all of her allegations and what she seems to think up in her head and believe to be true, I'm not really what, I'm not sure what to say about this because this seems to be the theme of our marriage over the last seven years. Mr. Osborne, um, is it your testimony that you did not throw the glass at her and that you just dropped it? I did not throw any glass at her and I did drop that on the floor and it did bust. I'm sorry that she cut her foot. I didn't realize she cut her foot. She never said anything about that until she put it in, into the PPO. Mr. Osborne, uh, Ms. Osborne also states that another time Shane grabbed me by my throat while I was driving my car down an open roadway. I started struggling to breathe. I put the car in reverse tried to pull into a neighbor's yard. Um, and that once she did that, you let go of her neck. Did you grab her by her throat while she was driving? Once again, these are all just uh, statements that she can think up in her mind. And once she throws them out there, she believes this to be true. So, no, I did not do any of that. Don't recognize, recollect any of what she's even talking about. Miss Osborne indicates that Shane has thrown bags of deer blood at me. 
and a couple of those bags hit her. She couldn't get out of the way. Did that happen? No, that um, did not happen when I was around. I'm not sure. Like I said, delusional state of mind. She's just basically stating this parte PPO to gain a upper hand on this divorce that she should have just came to me and said, I'm leaving. I wanted a divorce and we could have handled all this differently. But by doing this, she's gotten the upper hand because she's gotten full custody of my daughter in two days. She's She's gotten exclusive rights to my house in two days. She's kicked me out of my house where I have a place of business where I work. I have no means to, to work at all. I have She's 60 days now. I haven't worked. Been a great time. I'm not sure. To answer but, your question, no. Mr. Osborne, you need to make sure that you're answering my question, okay? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Um, Ms. Osborne states that in the last six months since 2017, um, your behavior has become violent. Are, are you violent with her? Nope. I'm not violent with her other than when she walks around and belittles me and calls me names and tries to provoke me into these moments where I get so mad that I vent back because when you poke somebody long enough, it's going to happen. So have I become violent? No. Have I been provoked? Yes. And it's amazing that she seems to record everything from a one-sided point of view, and that's of me being mad. But you never see her starting it and where it started from. Mr. Osborne, when you say provoked, do you physically hurt her? No, I have never, ever touched Tiffany Osborne. Never punched her, never smacked her, never slammed her down like she says. I have, I got two uh rotator cuffs that have been broken there's no way that i could pick up a 225 pound woman and slam her the um and, and i just want to clarify what you mean by provoked are you talking a uh, verbal argument with your wife or are you talking that you verbally assault her because you're mad i'm talking i'm talking about someone that's walking around calling me a meth head alcoholic terrible husband terrible father terrible person terrible this terrible that and just all kinds of belittling and name calling the same things that she is making the accusations that I do at her listening to her and reading the things that she put down. I feel like I'm reading a confession because these are the things that she actually does to me. Objection, Your Honor. That was non-responsive to Miss Bailey. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Bailey Hobbs. Let's try to focus this and conclude. Thank you, Your Honor. Yep, we're almost done. Um Mr. Osborne, you did not answer the question. I need you to listen to the question and make sure you answer it. Um, I want to I want to know what you mean by she provokes you. And I specifically what I'm asking is what are your actions when you say that Miss Osborne provokes you? She calls me a meth head, an alcoholic, a jobless bum, a terrible dad, a terrible husband. And belittling and name calling. Mr. Osborne. Did that answer your question? That's no. provoking to me. No. Okay. I'm, I'm asking sure how you respond to Miss Osborne oh, when she does that. Well, I just ask her mainly, just stop. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight with you. Stop calling me these names. Stop, stop, stop. But it does not happen. So that is my answer. And where I at, if I go to a certain level, I start calling names back. And there's where it escalates to. No physical. All right. And um, there's allegations that you let the air out of her tires. Did that happen? No, actually, I put air into her tires and I fixed her license plate. Did you take the license plate off her car on February 15th or 16th? No, I actually put her license plate on her car. Have you told Miss Osborne that you were going to feed her to the pigs? No, that's just a um, that's kind of a joke amongst my friends and everyone around my house, except for, you know, Tiffany, because she wants to take it literally. But no, that's just a joke. That's all that's ever been all it'll ever be. Mr. Osborne, how is um, telling somebody you're going to feed them to the pigs a joke? Can you explain that to me? Well, yeah, I can, because. When I when I'm around my friends, they always we always talk about feeding you the pigs because we live in a farming community. So it's um it so 
you have different jokes with different people. It's not a literal term of feeding anyone to the pigs. It's uh, something I picked up when I was working in Virginia, working with a pig farmer. Do you make that joke to anyone other than your um, wife? Um, as of lately, no, but five years ago, yeah, I used to make it amongst all my friends, amongst all kinds of people that I ran around with, and they re made the same response back. Mr. Osborne, Miss Osborne um, alleges that you poked her in her eye with your finger one time. Do you recall poking her in her eye? What I recall is Mrs. Osborne was going into another one of her mood swings, probably from having too many cocktails mixed with her prescriptions. So I grabbed my pillows from our bedroom and I had three pillows in my hand. I went to close the door. I didn't realize that Mrs. Osborne's face was going to be right in the door. I reached behind me to shut the door and I accidentally poked her in her eye. This was nothing that was intentional. And so once that happened, she committed to smacking me and punching me in my head countless times where my face was actually swollen up. Mr. Osborne, Ms. Osborne indicates that you brag that you know how to kill someone and get away with it. And that he recently said he was going to fake his own death, that he was going to get all of his teeth pulled and have one of his arms cut off. And he would leave that arm in a vehicle that was involved in an accident. He would get plastic surgery so we would not recognize him. Is Have you said those things? No. It goes back to this delusional state of mind, I guess, because I don't walk around bragging that I can kill people. That's just, that's, that's as stupid as it sounds. I'm sorry. My daughter and I, Peyton, were watching a movie. Hey, Mr. Osborne, and, you don't need to go on. You answered the question. Um, Just to finish up, Mr. Osborne, do you know how many times the police have been called to your house in the last 10 years? Yeah, they've been called on me 18 times, and I have never been arrested. And at this point, I really fear for my for my um, my safety, for my freedom, because she just makes these reports out of whatever she decides to make them out of. And I'm, I'm always the abuser. So I'm concerned that the 19th time I'm going to get arrested. And that's exactly what she's trying to achieve. What are you asking this court to do? I'm asking this court to please terminate this PPO because it's based upon false allegations. It's crippled me. I have no way to work. I have done none of this stuff. Mrs. Christian at, or Osborne has said that she has nowhere to go. She can go stay at her parents. I have nowhere to go. I'm a displaced person who's out here being a hobo in the real world with nowhere to go. I can't work. I am, I can't do anything. I'm asking them to please terminate this PPO and let me get my life back together so I can take care of my family. Oh, really quick. There was a motion for show cause filed by Miss Osborne where she indicates um, in February that you were on speakerphone and told your adult daughter to um, essentially beat her up. Can you do you do you recall that date? And what is your response I, to that? I, I recall the date very vividly. Not sure. Once again, she just makes up whatever she wants. I remember my daughter going in to pick up her graduation money. I was on speakerphone to tell her where the, the keys were to the file cabinet. She went in and unlocked it. Her mom came in and accosted her and accused her of stealing money that was mine, which was actually hers. I heard the phone rattling and drop, and I said, stand your ground, stand your ground. And that's what I said. Was the goal for you to have your adult daughter, Peyton, um, physically assault your wife? No, my intent was because my, my, my daughter Peyton was being attacked from what I heard on the phone. So my, my intention was for her to defend herself and not be beat up by her mother like it's happened before. I have no further questions at this time. Ms. Wickham, any uh, cross? Uh, yes, thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Osborne, uh, you have uh, indicated that the the majority, if not all of these allegations are things that Ms. Osborne has done to you or they're completely made up, correct? Yep. Uh, no sort of truth in any of them, correct? Well, I'm sure there's a little bit of truth in some of it, but I can't read through it all and I haven't read through it all. But for the most part, it's all blasphemy. You haven't had a chance to read through all of the allegations? I have read through them several times, probably like 20 times. But what's popping out in my head right now, no, I, I it doesn't stand out. Okay. Um, and uh, the the poking the eye with your finger, that was completely an accident? Completely, 100%. The uh, incident where uh, Miss Osborne fell down uh, in the pool building, I believe that was on January 30th of 2024, completely an accident? Com no, that was not an accident at all. That had nothing to do with me. When I grabbed the mic stand, she fell to the ground. I had both my hands on a mic stand, pulling it out of her hand so she didn't throw it at my drum set again. When I grabbed it and pulled it out of her hands, just like a cartoon, she fell right to the ground. You wouldn't describe that as an accident? I don't know how it would be an accident on my on my part, but she falls to the ground. I don't I don't how not how would that be an accident on my part? Okay. Uh so that wasn't an accident. It was just her falling to the ground. Absolutely one hundred percent true. Okay. Um and uh, when your uh, attorney asked you about the January 26th of 2024 incident about uh, the, uh, I guess, the educational opportunity Ms. Osborne had, do you recall that? I Very vividly. Very vividly. And, and you remember a yes. lot of uh, these incidents very vividly, correct? I try to, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, statement that you made, you were excited for her to be a productive member of society. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your main concern with this personal protection order is that you haven't been able to access your home, correct? No, my main concern with this PPO order is I have a business that I've ran for 38 years and I do not have any access to any of my my shop and my pole barn. I cannot make a living and pay all of these things that I'm being asked to pay. So my main thing is I don't have access to anything. So my home and my shop are all in one. So it's 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 all that I've just been kind of displaced out of my home. Okay. Um and uh with regards to the provocation, um, your attorney had spent some questioning and, and time trying to get you to answer uh, what provocation means uh, when Miss Osborne is provoking you. Uh, I believe your response is you respond just by saying you don't want to fight or sometimes you'll start calling her names, correct? Well, yeah, that's kind of how um, arguments work. They kind of progress when somebody starts calling your names back and then you call names back and you call names back. That's kind of just how they work. But you've never uh, physically uh, touched her, correct? I have never, never, ever physically touched Tiffany Osborne. I've never hit her, never smacked her, never lifted a hand to her. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Anything else, uh, Ms. Bailey Hobbs? Just really brief, Your Honor, um, Mr. Osborne. When we were talking, when you were just um, describing your main concern regarding <clears throat> the personal protection order, um, what concerns do you have regarding how Miss Osborne will use this personal protection order? Well, basically, my house and all of my things are on display for her dad and her dad's friends and her boyfriends or whoever's coming over to her house and all my stuff is missing and coming up missing and my safe's been smashed and all these things are going on. And oddly enough, none of it has to do with any of her stuff but my own. So I feel like I'm being taken advantage of by her using this PPO to go through all my stuff and, and personally just go through it and get rid of whatever she wants and take it and hide it. 
Um, it's just, it's very, um, it's an abuse of a PPO because I have no rights and I've done nothing wrong to deserve this. And she's holding me like ransom. She's holding my stuff ransom. She says she wants nothing but a check, but yet why is she holding all my stuff? Why doesn't she just go to her mom or her dad's? Because Mr. she Osborne? wants control. Mr. Osborne? Yes, yes, ma'am. Do you have concerns that um, Ms. Osborne will file false police reports? I know for a fact that she does file false police reports. There's 18 of them to prove it. I've never been arrested for anything because I haven't done anything wrong. Is there a concern that she will use this personal protection order to continue filing those? I, I'm I'm concerned about my my freedom because as long as she has the ability to go out and file these false allegations all over the place and everyone believes her, then yeah, eventually I'm going to lose my freedom because she's going to get away with it eventually if no one stops her from filing all these false police reports because they are just that, false police reports. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, sir, you mentioned that uh, you have your business and your tools and that in a pole barn. Uh, how far on the property, how far is the pole barn from the house? It is on the, I have two acres, Your Honor, and it is on, it is on the furthest corner of the property. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a distance. It's probably 300 feet, 200, uh, not that much, probably 150 feet. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you. But everything is separate. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Ms. Bailey Hobbs, any additional witnesses? Um, Your Honor, I should have two witnesses in the Zoom room. Um, if we could take the Trooper Balecki. Um, I only have a Caitlin Balecki in the way. Yep. Okay, that's the one that I would like to call. Okay. Ms. Balecki, uh, can you hear me? Please unmute your device, ma'am, so you can talk to us. You are still muted. Click on the mic in the lower left corner. Yeah, I've got it now. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Balecki, we're going to take some testimony from you. So if you would, raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Balecki, where do you work? The Michigan State Police. How long have you worked there? Five years and seven months. What is your position with the Michigan State Police? I'm a trooper. What are your responsibilities in that position? Uh, primarily to investigate crimes and respond to calls for service. How long have you been in the position of trooper? Five years. Have you investigated any police reports made by the petitioner Tiffany Osborne? I have. What did you investigate? Uh, report of a breaking and entering and a PPO violation. Your Honor, with regards to the PPO violation, I have no objection to that, but I wonder what the uh, other incident has to do with the burden of proof uh, that is for today of whether or not there's uh, reason for Ms. Osborne uh, to fear Mr. Osborne such that a PPO should be in place. Okay. Ms. Bailey Hobbs, how is the breaking and entering uh, uh, germane to this matter? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the the two are connected because they both involve allegations regarding Mr. Osborne. They are specifically germane to the um, issue that Ms. Osborne will continue to try to use this personal protection order to uh, make false allegations against Mr. Osborne. Well, I'll give you a little leeway, but let's tie it up. I don't I don't know when the B&E was, but 
if it was like 10 years ago, I guess the court's not real interested in that. It would the these claims that that's my next question, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Um, Miss uh, Trooper Blackie, when do you know when this police report was made? Uh, yes, they're both encompassing the same offense, uh, the breaking and entering as part of a PPO violation allegation. It was on March 14th of this year. Again, Your Honor, this doesn't go to any of the incidents in the personal protection order. I'm going to continue my objection as to relevance of uh, Trooper Balecki's testimony. Yeah, go to relevance of the, uh, again, the uh, show cause that you file, as well as any credibility issues. So the court's going to take the testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Balecki, when did you start investigating this um, report? March 14th, the date it, it was reported to dispatch. I was dispatched the incident. During the course of the investigation, what have you found? Uh, I found several pieces of evidence and testimony to directly dispute the PPO violation as well as the breaking and entering. Um, I, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up just a little bit. Can you um, identify the exact uh, allegations that were made by Ms. Osborne? Uh, yes, the allegation was that uh, just prior to calling dispatch that night, uh, Mr. Shane Osborne had broken into the residence. Were there any allegations regarding what was taken? Uh, no. And during the course of the investigation, am I correct in understanding that you found um, uh, facts to indicate that Mr. Osborne did not break into the residence on that date? Correct. Have there been any, any other incidental findings during that investigation? Uh, several, uh, but in regards to a PPO violation, uh, there was another allegation made on a separate date uh, less than a month prior, and I also found evidence to dispute that as well. What Do you recall what that allegation was? Uh, yes, an allegation that uh, one of their daughters went to the home to gather things and um, Shane was on the phone with the daughter and the allegation was to uh, that he he stated, uh, quote, beat that bitch down, unquote, uh, in regards to uh, physically assaulting uh, Tiffany. And what did your investigation um, uncover regarding that? Uh, two eyewitnesses that disputed those al that al allegation. During your um, investigation, has Miss Osborne been cooperative? She has. Has Mr. Osborne been cooperative? He has. Is that investigation complete yet? No, it's still ongoing. Have you, during your investigation, have you found any other um, facts to indicate that Mr. Osborne has violated the personal protection order that is in place right now? I have not found any uh, evidence or testimony to substantiate that Mr. Osborne has made any violations to the PPO. During the course of your investigation, have you looked up how many incidents and contact reports have been reported by Ms. Osborne? I have. And those um, those were reported against Mr. Osborne? Several of them, yes. Um, do you recall how many were how many reports were made by Ms. Osborne against Mr. Osborne? I believe there were more than 15, but less than 20. During the course of your investigation, have you found any um any facts to indicate that Mr. Osborne has ever been prosecuted on anything? He has not. Is there anything else regarding personal protection violations with your involvement with this case that you'd like the court to know? No, ma'am. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Wickham, any uh, cross-examination? 
Yes, thank you. Trooper Balecki, with regards to the breaking and entering the 314 of 24 incident, um, you were asked extremely general questions, uh, and you said uh, that you found evidence to dispute the allegations, but we didn't hear uh, what what evidence that is. And uh, so could you please tell the court what that is? Uh, sure. The There was a uh, eyewitness to that night of their juvenile daughter who stated she was the one that uh, took the door uh, and removed it from the screws. Uh, also, Miss Osborne had stated that her slider door was open in her bedroom and the juvenile uh, stated she also opened that to let her dog out on the balcony. It is on the second story. She, Miss Osborne stated that she believed uh, Mr. Osborne had used a ladder to enter that second story bedroom. However, there was no ladder that was observed in the area and there was no markings on the side of the uh, home that would indicate a ladder had rubbed up against it and there was uh, your your standard dirt on the siding is white so it would have been fairly obvious. Um, the time frame in which Miss Osborne and her juvenile daughter were outside of the uh, residence was approximately 30 minutes uh, which is a small amount of time. A neighbor has cameras which capture uh, vehicles that drive down the roadway. And that witness indicated to me that the only activity on his cameras was wildlife that night. Uh, the, Mr. Osborne has a solid alibi with three witnesses in which I have confirmed that uh, through the duration of that 30 minutes and then some. Uh, as well as the fact that uh, there's only truly one thing that was disturbed in the home, and that was concealed with so much, uh, so many items in front of it that had been essentially hiding those items that were disturbed, that it would have been reasonably impossible for someone to have broken into the home, gained access to those items, concealed those items and then been out of the home and out of the area within 30 minutes. Well, that was a lot, Trooper Balecki. So the information that you gathered, you're making conclusions based off of that, uh, I guess, that investigation and what you found. This is still an ongoing investigation. My job is to find the facts and the facts only. Okay. It's my understanding that generally when you're looking at uh, a criminal investigation, that it's a jury's job to determine facts. Would you agree with that? No, I collect facts and I collect evidence. No. Oh, OK, uh, so your facts are telling you that the juvenile daughter admitted to doing some things uh, prior to leaving the home. That is that is a testimony. Yes. OK. And uh, with regards to what Ms. Osborne told you, uh, do you, I mean, she told you what she believed happened, but couldn't necessarily prove whether or not it did, correct? Oh, she made an accusation. Okay. All right. As most people do when they're filing a police report? Correct. Okay. Uh, with regards to the other allegation uh, where one of the daughters went to the home, and I think you quoted the uh, part about beat that bitch down. You said you had two eyewitnesses to dispute that incident. Who are those eyewitnesses? Both the, both of their daughters. Okay. So the daughters of the parties? Correct. Okay. One of them is a juvenile? Correct. These incidents that you uh, had indicated uh, more than 15, but less than 20 incidents, do you know over what time frame that occurred? Not exactly, but within the last five years. So you don't know exactly, but you feel confident to say that it's within five years. Yes, the call history started about 2020. And are you able to look at all uh, reporting jurisdictions, not just the Michigan State Police? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Bailey Hobbs, anything else? I have no redirect, Your Honor. Trooper Balecki, I thank you for your testimony. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. You as well. Bailey Hobbs, any additional witnesses? Um, I subpoenaed one more. It should be in the waiting room. But if not, then I guess I'm going to have to say that I don't. 
No, we don't have any other witnesses in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. We'll rest. Okay. Ms. Wickham, uh, do you have any uh, witnesses that you'd like to present or evidence? I do. Uh, Ms. Osborne. Okay. Ms. Osborne, we'll have you raise your right hand, be sworn in, then we'll proceed. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Absolutely do. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Wickham. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, Your Honor, may I ask, I had emailed the uh, exhibits email with three pictures uh, prior to the hearing. Were those received by the court? Yes, we received those. Uh, I would tell you they're not in color when they print out, so I can't. I mean, I see some things, but I don't know. <laughs> My apologies. I certainly was prepared to use the, sh the share screen function so that the court could see them in color. Okay. If you wish to do so, you can go ahead. You Thank you. I'll do that at the appropriate time. Uh, Ms. Osborne, with regards to this personal protection order, I don't want to rehash necessarily every single incident, uh, but do you stand by the statements that you made in the verified statement attached to the PPO petition? Absolutely. Um, and then let's talk about uh, the uh, January 30th of 2024 incident. Uh, you've heard Mr. Osborne's uh, testimony. Do you disagree with that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And in fact, that night, were you injured or sustained some sort of injuries? Definitely to my back. The first time in the pole barn, second time outside the pole barn, two blows to the ground. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd ask permission to uh, use the share screen yep, function to publish exhibit one. Uh, with regards to uh, this picture, I'm going to blow that up for the court. Uh, Ms. Osborne, uh, what does this show? I had a white puffer coat on that night. It shows um, when I was thrown for the second time outside on the rocks outside the pole barn. Um, those are the marks through the coat from the rocks, okay. the impact on the rocks. So part of the incident took place in the pole barn, but then the other part was outside. Correct. Did you, in fact, go to the pole barn to confront Mr. Osborne about something? Yes, I did. Okay. Your Honor, I was going to stop share screen. Were you able to see that exhibit yeah, one? Yeah, yep. I'd ask that that be admitted. Thank you. Bailey Hobbs, any response? Um, Your Honor, the only objection that I have is that I received them at the same time the court has, so I have not had a proper chance to review them or discuss them with my client. Okay, well, court will admit, uh, I guess I'll admit that as Defendant's Exhibit A. I'm Defendant. sorry, Petitioner's Exhibit 1. Thank you, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, so, Ms. Osborne, uh, with regards to, uh, I guess, this confrontation that you had with Mr. Osborne, uh, do you differ in, in how that went down? Completely, yes. Okay. Uh, were you uh, having some sort of issue with regards to parenting your children and the things that Mr. Osborne was teaching them to say? Absolutely. Um, it was profanity that I had a problem with that okay. was being used in the home that I, is unacceptable to me Okay, for my children uh, to use. So you went out there to talk to him about that and you were angry, but you weren't, I guess, uh, it, as heated as he describes you. No, it, I was going down to speak to him. I, yes, I was angry, but it was just to be a discussion about our child. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, thank you. That we've had before. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Your Honor, may I uh, publish uh, number two? Yes. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Osborne, with regards to this picture, uh, was that taken after that incident on January 30th of 2024? Correct. All right. And with regards to this picture, that's you, obviously, correct? Yes. Uh, and what is this marking on your forehead? That's a bruise. Okay. Uh, so right there in the middle of your forehead? Correct. Do you know how that was sustained? Um, in the pole barn, when he first came up and started spitting in my face, um, he kind of head butted me at the same time when he chest bumped me. Okay, so the chest bump included a headbutt? 
Yes. Okay. Um, and that was uh, the Con mark. Uh, yes, contact. Yep. Okay. I uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask that uh, this be admitted as petitioners number two. Okay. Ms. Bailey Hobbs, any response? Your Honor, I'll, I'll only renew my objection regarding timeliness of, of notice of the exhibit. Okay. Court will admit uh, petitioners exhibit two. Thank you. And Ms. Osborne, uh, with regards to uh, the provocation, did you ever give Mr. Osborne any reason uh, to be provoked? No, not not that I feel he should have been using word language like that. It's very unacceptable. And so when I tried having a discussion with him, what language he thinks is acceptable for the children to use, um, that's when he started coming towards me and escalated and started screaming and spitting in my face, nose to nose. Okay. Were you at the hospital longer than two hours that night? Yes, I believe it was about five in the morning when my daughter could come get me. Okay. And uh, I believe during that incident, he made uh, a comment about uh, being able to take his work computer. Do you recall him stating that? That he wanted to take his work computer? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and did you hear him say uh, in a, 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 a specific mocking tone, no, that's my personal computer, kind of mocking you and what you said? Yes. Uh, is uh, Was that a frequent occurrence for Mr. Osborne to use that kind of tone when he would speak with you? Oh, yes. Okay. And so that's a, a very good example that he gave the court today of how he would normally talk to you when he was mocking you? Um, he does much worse, but yes. Okay. Correct. When he was asked about the incident on January 26th of 2024, he stated he does not recall throwing pop in your face. Uh, do you have any reason to believe why he wouldn't have recalled that? Um, I believe he does, but I am not him. Um, uh, maybe drunk. Um, I, I'm really not sure, but I, I believe. Objection. Call for speculation. I'll Anger. ask him different way. Sustained. Yep. Miss Osborne. On the night of January 26th of 2024, uh, was Mr. Osborne intoxicated? Absolutely. Okay. And how could you tell? Um, by his language, his, the, the, his voice slurring, um, anger. Okay. And this is something you've seen from him and signs you've seen from him over many years? Many. Yes. Okay. When he had indicated that he's seen you use many different kinds of drugs, but then didn't necessarily list any drugs, ma'am, let's just ask, do you use any drugs? Um, my prescription medications, yes. Okay. And I believe in their uh, uh, amend, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, the attachment to the uh, motion to terminate, they had indicated that you uh, abuse your prescription drugs. Do you abuse those? No, I do not. And uh, you take uh, Ambien, or you had taken Ambien, but you discontinued that, correct? Correct. Um, and instead, you decided to uh, take an over-the-counter medication, z correct? z correct. Mm -hmm. And then you have a valid prescription for the past 15 years for Xanax, correct? Correct. Uh, you also suffer uh, from a number of medical issues specifically relating to your back and, and pain, uh, you do have a valid prescription for the past 17 years for hydrocodone? Correct. And you never abuse those and take them as prescribed, correct? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, so are you uh, at all sure of what he's referring to when he says he's seen you take many different kinds of drugs? No, I, no. <laughs> okay. Not at all. When he spoke to you or was was uh, talking to you about feeding you to the pigs, how often would he say that? Um, he has said that on a few different occasions when he's been intoxicated, yes. Okay. Um, I would say maybe I've heard it three or four times. Okay. And uh, does it ever, in the way that he's uh, delivering, because sometimes the joke is in the delivery, uh, does he ever make it sound like it's a joke? 
No, not at all. Did that make you fear that he would possibly carry out, out on that? Um, yes, it did make me fear that. It made me fear him. All right. Um, and you've never taken it as a joke? Never. No. And with regards to why you filed for this personal protection order, there's been a lot made of the, the number of incidents that have been filed over the years. Do you agree with uh, between 15 and 20 police reports that may have been filed? Perhaps, yes, there has been quite a few, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe Mr. Osborne's testimony was over the past 10 years. Would you agree that that would be also over a 10-year span? Um, I think it's much shorter than that. I think that it's been, uh, the police calls have been over the last five years, maybe. Okay. Um, and in your petition for the PPO, you indicated that uh, Mr. Osborne's been uh, suffering from a meth addiction for the past five years, correct? Yes, he has with my brother. Okay. Yes. All right. Are you using this personal protection order to get any sort of advantage in the pending divorce matter? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, are you genuinely concerned for your safety? Absolutely. I fear every door has to be locked. Mm -hmm. Everything has to have a stick in the window. If anything's taken out, if I find any door ajar, any window ajar, I call the police. I'm terrified. And in protecting my children, which I have both at home with me now. Mm -hmm. With regards to the incident where he poked you in the eye, did you hear Mr. Osborne's explanation for why he poked you in the eye? Mm, yes, I did. Your Honor, may I share screen again? Yes. All right, ma'am, with regards to this picture, is this in fact a, a picture of half of your face? Yes, it is. Uh, and this relates to that incident uh, that you put on uh, the uh, verified statement with regards to him poking you in your eye? Correct. And uh, that uh, eye, is, as far as, can you please describe what's going on with your eye in this picture? Um, with the eye, um, he got up in my face and poked his index finger as he's screaming at me over the balcony poked it right in my eye. So what you're seeing is a lot of skin and um, my eye was severely irritated. Um, okay. I had a hard time seeing for a while. It took a while to cover. I had to use an eye patch for a while. All right. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I would ask this be admitted as petitioners number three. Okay, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Your Honor, I'll just renew my objection regarding notice of the exhibit. Okay, court will admit uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 3. Okay, thank you. And ma'am, uh, with regards to this, I guess this little fold that we have right here, uh, that's not something that you would uh, or had uh, prior to Mr. Osborne putting his finger in your eye? No, that's stretched skin. Okay, thank that's you. My... Mm -hmm. That's your what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's my eyelid um, stretched out. Okay. You heard Trooper Balecki testify uh, about uh, a, a number of things. Um, the breaking and entering, it was your belief that someone had gotten into the home? Um, I was hoping not, but when Paisley and I got home after a short amount of time, I found the door that had been screwed to go down to the basement. It was screwed shut. I found that ajar and I also find, found my sliding glass door um, open, wide open up in my bedroom. So it um, made me fear instantly. Okay. Um, so that's why I called the police. Okay. Um, and then the uh, other allegation with regards to uh, the, what you filed the show cause for uh, about being on the speaker phone. Uh, do you stand by your statement that he, uh, while on speaker phone was telling your oldest daughter to quote unquote, beat that bitch down? Absolutely. It was beat that bitch down, punch that fucking bitch. Okay. Get the money and run Peyton. All right. 
if this personal protection order uh, were to be terminated, uh, would you fear Mr. Osborne uh, taking any sort of retribution? Yes, I fear for the lives of my children and myself. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Ms. Bailey Hobbs? Yes, thank you. Ms. Osborne, with regard to uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 2, where you said that there was a bruise on your forehead, when was that photo taken? That was in the incident um, when Shane was in my face in the barn, in the so pole barn. It was taken while Shane was in your face in the barn, in the pole barn? No, my mom took that the next day. Okay, so the next day. Correct. Around what time? Um, I do not remember the time afternoon i would say okay and it's your testimony that your mother took it yes did the emts or the police officers take any photos um not that i'm aware of no um it was so dark out i, I don't i don't think so how about that first photo petitioners exhibit one regarding something on your back um when was that taken um that was taken the next day by my mom as well and do you recall emt or police officers taking a photo of your back no i was covered in um clothing and i had a coat on that was from the impact on the rocks outside from the second time through me, just regarding the photo in petitioner's exhibit three of your face. Um, when was that taken? Of the eye, yes, by my mom. When the next day. Uh, yes, the next day. Yes, I had a trooper or an officer the night before take take me to my mom's for safety, and um, she took the picture of the eye the next day. Miss Osborne, did that occur when you say that Shane poked you in the eye once? Yes, and that was included in, in, in that was in. Let me Sorry. finish my question, please. And that was in your allegation number three that's titled since 2017? Yes. Is it now your testimony that he poked you in the eye during the January 30th incident? No, no, those, that's separate. So no. It's separate, but your mother took a picture of your eye that was poked? On the that same time, day she took? No, no, it was not. That I was poked a year before the incident on the rocks. My mom also took pictures of my back when this incident happened in January. Okay, so I've asked you when the photo was taken. Number three, the one of your half of your face. When was that photo taken? Okay. Um, I believe it was April of last year. I'm not positive. The police report would show when the officer um, took me to my mother's. For which incident? For being poked in the eye. He also took me to get gas and, uh, and he escorted me to my mother's for safety that night. Okay, hold on. You just stated that when you got home from uh, with your youngest daughter, you saw the screwed door that was ajar and a sliding glass door ajar. So that made you fear instantly that someone had come in the house, right? Absolutely, yes. Because when we left the home, I don't remember a slider being open. I make sure everything is closed because of what's going on. And that door was screwed shut. And 
So then you called the police and made a report that Shane had broken into the house? No, I did not. I called 911 to tell them that I found two door two doors ajar and it, you know, and then when she showed up, I told her, you know, I I I don't know. Basley was telling me that she was the one that went outside. Objection, Your Honor. I'm hearsay. sorry. Miss Osborne, is it your testimony that Trooper Blecky was wrong when she testified about what the allegations were? She, that she was wrong about when she testified what the allegations about what were. the allegations were regarding that breaking and entering. Well, yes, because I called nine one one because there were two doors open. I wanted to make sure somebody was not in the house. It did not necessarily mean Shane. I just was doing it to make sure we were safe. So you never personally implicated Shane. Well, I had to tell her that there was a PPO order, and I was not sure. Who it could be. So what exactly did you tell her? I don't remember what exactly what I told her. Just that, well, you know, I'm going through a divorce. Um, PP order, O order. Um, those two doors being open really kind of freaked me out. And I thought I should call the police just to make sure everything was safe. And Miss uh, Trooper Balecki indicated that you stated that there were some items that were messed with in the home. The door, the two doors. I called the police because two doors were open. She then made her way through my house. And then, so it was Trooper Blecky's testimony, as far as I understood it, that there were some items that were implicated in this breaking and entering and that she found that they were um, hidden and obscure and they would have been difficult to reach within the half an hour. Um, she called me um, to come down while she was, she said, can I search your home? I said, yes. She went in the basement and found, um, well, we have safes that we have hidden with slider, like glass doors. And she looked behind there and found out one of the safes had been broken. And she called me down to look at that. Okay, so you didn't report that? No. Ms. Osborne, you indicated that on January 30th, 2024, you injured your back. He injured my back, correct. You Isn't it true that you have already have back pain and back conditions as well? I, absolutely, yes. What are those what are those conditions? I have a double curve of scoliosis that's um filled with arthritis. I have stenosis, um a slew of things, uh, mainly the arthritis and the double curve of this in the spine of scoliosis. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thanks. Ms. Wickham, anything else? Just a follow up, Your Honor. Ms. Osborne, um, when the police would report out to your home, uh, would they ask you whether or not you wanted to press charges? Yes, they did. And what was your answer frequently? It was no. He's my husband. He's the father of my children. And um, if I do, he'll kill me. He will kill me. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Okay. Nothing for me, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Wickham, any additional witnesses? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. To closing argument, uh, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Your Honor, the the testimony today establishes that Miss Osborne has made claims that aren't true. The the trooper testified that um, she has made claims against Mr. Osborne that the trooper has found to be false. Um, there was some discussion regarding mocking uh, Miss Osborne between her and her attorney. Um, but it's, it's important to note that mocking does not create a reasonable fear or apprehension that someone's going to stalk you, injure you, hurt you. Um, Miss Osborne has called the police on Mr. Osborne over 15 times in the last five years. 
Um, he has never been arrested. There's never been um, anything to move forward on. And even if Miss Osborne had chosen not to press charges, that at times is not her decision to make. And so any findings made by police officers um, were not did not translate into uh, charges at the prosecutor's level. Um, she produces bruises on the forehead, a photo of the bruise on the forehead. That bruise looks like, I would, it, it does not look like it's a very fresh bruise, um, if, if it is a bruise at all. Um, Miss Osborne indicates that you know, she was poked in the eye and has a photo of a swollen eye, but yet was very unsure about the exact date and time and who took the photo. Um, Mr. Osborne testified that he has no interest in hurting Miss Osborne, that he's never physically hurt her, um, and that he just wants not to have the police called on him and end up in jail for something he does not do, or and he would like to find some way to have some access to his building so that he can work. Um, Miss Osborne indicates that, that Mr. Osborne uses illegal drugs and has an addiction to drinking, yet she produces no evidence to support that. Um, as the court knows, the petitioner has the burden of persuasion to prove that the the ex parte personal protection order injunction um, should still continue. And that's pursuant to Pickering v. Pickering, 253 Mishap 694. Also, pursuant to MCR 3.310 subsection B5. It is our position that petitioner has not satisfied her burden of proof to establish that a reasonable person would be fearful or apprehensive that Mr. Osborne would stalk her, assault her, harm any pets that are in her possession, so on and so forth. Um, we are asking this court to terminate the personal protection order and if the court finds it appropriate, um, it may be better suited to be in order in the companion case, the family case regarding the divorce, to restrain both parties from approaching each other, uh, calling each other names, doing anything to each other that would be unacceptable to this court. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wickham? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. With regards to uh, the burden, I do believe that uh, we have met our burden that a PPO is appropriate. Uh, the uh, court must look at a reasonable person standard uh, that a reasonable person would fear uh, the respondent. Um, and if the court finds that there is reasonable cause to believe uh, that uh, the respondent uh, has committed or would commit uh, the actions in the initial petition, a PPO will be granted. Uh, with regards to uh, the issues here, we do have that he has threatened to kill her. I'm unsure in what world uh, threatening to feed someone to pigs is a joke uh, and uh, that uh, it was meant in anything other than a threatening manner. Um, if if it is or was meant as a joke, I'm unsure that that's the type of thing someone should be joking about. But we also have actual injury. Uh, with regards to the exhibits, uh, petitioners number one and two are with regards to the 130 of 24 incident uh, where uh, the respondent had pushed her down on the rock so hard that it caused uh, the marks that we see in exhibit number one, uh, that uh, additionally that he had headbutted her where we see uh, a bruise, and perhaps the lighting is not the best in that picture, but I'm unsure that they were looking to preserve it uh, as a, uh, you know, potential for something like this that would happen. Uh, but it was a picture taken where I can see discoloration on her forehead. 
her testimony is, is that he caused those injuries. With regards to exhibit number three, again, we have actual injury, something that the personal protection order would prohibit. Uh, we have uh, her eye in quite a state. You can see that it is red, it is puffy, uh, that there is kind of an unnatural curvature of the flap of her eyelid uh, that she indicates that he had actually stretched out her eyelid. Uh, so, Your Honor, we do have, again, a threat to injure or kill, uh, feeding to her to the pigs, and we have actual physical injury. Uh, with regards to uh, the attacks of my client's credibility, uh, Trooper Balecki, uh, with regards to uh, her evidence that disputes the allegations, it's the daughters of of the, the parties uh, who I think are quite stuck in the middle here. Uh, and uh, if uh, Mr. Osborne has an alibi, great. But what we've heard Ms. Osborne testify is, is that she saw doors ajar and open that weren't open uh, before she left. She, she believed she had had everything locked up tight, so she called the police. Uh, the uh, issues uh, with the number of police reports that have been filed but no arrests uh, made um, and uh, I, I respect Miss Bailey Hobbs' argument with regards to uh, uh, why charges haven't been filed, but those of us who actually practice criminal law in this county, uh, who do defense work, uh, know that frequently we will show up and we will be told there's no cooperative victim, there's no cooperative witness, we're going to dismiss it. If they want to bring it back, they can absolutely ask us to reissue it. <laughs> Uh, so, Your Honor, uh, if a trooper is going to or a police officer is going to fill out a report, uh, their question as to whether or not they're going to submit it to the prosecutor's office will usually depend on whether or not there's a cooperative uh, victim or witness. Uh, so the fact that we have no one's been arrested, no one's been charged doesn't mean that these incidents did not occur. And Miss Osborne's testimony is she would frequently tell them that she did not want him arrested, but at the time. You know, she's calling the cops, she's exercising her right, and I don't think that we should uh, necessarily uh, put her down, if you will, for her ability to call the cops to defuse a situation. And, and if that's what they did and that's what she was satisfied with, that's what she told them, is the situation is diffused. Uh, we've uh, heard uh, some testimony with regards to his main concern, and his main concern is that he's not able uh, to access the home and his pole barn. Little concern that the pole barn is 150 feet from the house. I, I don't know as though uh, whether or not there was any sort of consideration about allowing him onto the pole barn property uh, to be able to work. I would say that that's a dangerous license to give, given that we've got, again, the threat to uh, to kill and, and injure and the, the actual injuries that have occurred. Um, Your Honor, this is exactly why PPOs are, are here. It is not in any way to get a leg up in a divorce. I'm unsure of any sort of mutual um, uh, PPO. In fact, I believe the statute specifically prohibits mutual protection orders, uh, and I'm unsure whether or not such a provision could be put in place in the divorce. Uh, if there is a concern that uh, Miss Osborne is getting rid of property. She shouldn't be. Certainly, Miss Bailey Hobbs knows the mechanism to file a motion uh, with regards uh, to uh, some sort of mutual restraining order regarding the dissipation of assets. Uh, the PPO, a reasonable person, would fear the type of conduct uh, that Mr. Osborne has exhibited towards Miss Osborne, and therefore we are asking you to keep this personal protection order in place. Okay, thank you. Well, in this matter, uh, the court can grant uh, a personal protective order pursuant to MCL 600.2950. If the court determines that there is reasonable cause to believe that an individual has committed or may commit any acts listed under subsection 1A through K, reasonable cause is shown by facts leading a fair-minded person of average intelligence and judgment to believe that an incident has occurred or will occur. I'm citing People v. Richardson at 204 Mishap 71, 1994 case. In this case, the court has heard far more testimony than we usually get in these uh, particular matters. Uh, in these particular cases, especially because oftentimes it's a he said, she said, credibility is always a consideration in every case. 
Oftentimes, the parties will allege that the other party or one of their witnesses is not truthful or lying. The court has found that inconsistencies in testimony does not mean that an individual has lied. Conflict, conflicting testimony can occur as a result of a witness's background, perception, bias, understanding or misunderstanding or a mistake. When consistencies occur, the court will attempt to determine if they can be reconciled by other testimony or evidence. There was obviously in this case, substantial conflicting testimony and uh, quite frankly, more than what the court would normally see in this matter. So the court has to look at and say, okay, which of these parties is the believable party? And when I do that, the court looks at the only other testimony that Mr. Uh, Trooper Bilecki in this matter, a state police trooper for over five years. She claims that she investigated in this uh, particular incident that uh, she, uh, as it relates to the show cause that, and that were allegations by the petitioner that the respondent told his daughter to beat that bitch down However, the court would note that the two children that were in this case, one adult, one a minor, eyewitnesses, and they stated that, uh, in fact, the, uh, that those allegations were not made, that, in fact, uh, Trooper Bilecki could not confirm any of those particular allegations. There were also testimony of a B and E, and I don't see that uh, Trooper Bilecki did not state that, uh, again, that it was, or that the petitioner did not say it was the respondent in this case, but court finds it interesting that, uh, again, the petitioner own testimony tells, states that the, her daughter had said that she had, uh, basically that she had taken the screws out of the one door and had left the slider open, notwithstanding that, that uh, she continued to at least give an inference that it was the uh, respondent in this uh, particular matter, even after both the daughters had denied this incident on the show cause occurring, and uh, that the other one had made an explanation as to why those doors had the issue that they were in. The court will note that when the petitioner testified, she testified that she went to the pole barn to confront the respondent. Court finds that interesting that if she is going there to confront him, that clearly she does not have the fear or trepidation that she claims over the course of these 15 to 20 other instances that occurred before in this matter. There's no doubt that she had some uh, injury. Uh, the claim of the respondent was that the injury occurred is that she had taken a mic, threw it at a drum set, that she was picking up the mic again. He grabbed the mic stand, was pulling it away from her. She then at that point fell to the ground. Uh, he did testify that uh, this other incident concerning the the, the uh, finger to the eye that that occurred as he was going out of the room or something, reached back to the door or something and stuck her in the eye and that that was an accident. In this matter, when the court, uh, again, weighs the evidence and the credibility of the parties, the court is convinced in this matter that, in fact, uh, the incident, as stated, did not occur as alleged, and that is the basis for the uh, personal protective order. As a result, the court is going to terminate the personal protective order in this matter. The court also does not find by any burden of proof in this matter that the respondent had violated the personal protective order, so the court will, in fact, deny that uh, violation as well. Court will enter an order to that effect. The court would instruct the parties. You do have a pending divorce action. Many of these issues can be taken care of in that by putting in place an exclusive possession order or something of that nature. The court can tailor it 
in such a way as to not infringe upon, again, either of the party's rights in this matter, but to afford protection uh, as may be needed in this matter. So that will be the order of the court. We'll conclude this matter at uh, 12 33 p.m. You're free to go. I think the thing that harmed her the most was the fact that she went down to the pole barn or his shop late at night to confront him. And that was her word. She went down to confront him. You don't do that if you are, if you are truly afraid of somebody. You don't confront them. So I think that's what harmed her the most. I did, I thought it was kind of comical, his, his um, description of her throwing herself on the ground and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe she did. I'm not really sure about that. The judge believed him, I think, in that part. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. I could see it happening. I mean, she's called the police on him 18 times. She's tried to get police involved 18 times in the past few years, and she still did not move out. She did not leave. So that shows that she's not afraid. So that's just what I think. I think that's why he, he prevailed, why the, the um, husband prevailed in this. And anyway, that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.